Hi, my name is Alina Salaga, and I'm a postdoc at the Lohenfeld Tannenbaum Research Institute in Toronto, and I'm going to talk about my recent work with Kieran Campbell that is presented in the AutoML Journal Tribe. We focus on the case where we have many heuristic objectives that approximate the true unknown meta objective, but not all of them may be useful in terms of aligning with the meta objective with respect to their maximum. This is a scenario that frequently arises in the context of hyperparameter optimization of workflows for biomedical data analysis. Let's say we have a workflow where we have some input data and we want to analyze it via a sequence of parameterized steps to compute some desired result. And we want to find hyperparameter settings that will generate the best results as measured by some quantity of interest. Now, in biomedical data analysis, there is typically no ground truth available so the workflow success is typically evaluated with heuristic measures and many such heuristic measures are possible for example if our workflow is a clustering workflow where, where we want to take some cells and cluster them based on their gene expression profiles then we could um, evaluate whether our clustering or our results are successful by turning to some unsupervised cluster clustering purity metrics or to metrics that incorporate some of our uh, domain knowledge. In any case, all of these different measures are uh, assumed and supposed to approximate the true meta-objective that is unknown and possibly even unquantifiable, because in the context of biomedical analysis, it might represent a very complex question, such as, did I find biologically meaningful patterns in my data? And because we're dealing with real data, unexpected experimental failures in a data generating process can sometimes rend render objectives that we have chosen uninformative. So in this cartoon above, we have a couple of objectives and the first one doesn't really inform us which parameter values we should choose. So we could really discard it in our optimization procedure. We address this with our method that automatically infers which objectives are useful to guide optimization. And we do this by letting the user express preferences over the functional form of the objectives. We in, um, introduce a concept of desirable behaviors, which describe practitioners' expectations about what a useful objective should look like. And these behaviors are computed using the posterior of the surrogate function. And then our multi-objective Bayesian optimization method automatically concentrates on the region of the solution space that maximizes useful objectives. We do this by building on the random scalarizations approach introduced by Perea et al, which is designed for scenarios when the user wants solutions from a subset of the Pareto front and not the entire Pareto front, which is quite commonly arising in real world applications. And this approach acts on the scalarization function and specifically its weights. So a scalarization function as lambda is parameterized by weights lambda and uh, combines objective values at uh, every location x into a single scalar. And so what this um, approach does is it defines a prior over the scalarization weights, p of lambda, that is specified by the user, and it determines the desired region of the Pareto front. So on the right, we have a cartoon with two objectives, and the solid black line um, shows the Pareto front, and the dashed line shows the imposed distribution that this prior p of lambda ends up imposing on the Pareto optimal solutions. And so when performing optimization under this approach, we're going to return the solutions that concentrate in the high probability regions of this imposed distribution, which are shown on the cartoon with the blue dots. Our method returns solutions from the region of the Pareto front where the useful objectives are maximized. And we infer which objectives are useful using these objective behaviors I mentioned. And the idea is that a useful objective will have a desirable behavior. We upweight useful objectives in our optimization procedure and behaviors are user specified, but we do propose some examples in our work. Specifically, we propose three examples. And the first one that we call explainability basically favors objectives that explain the data well and have lower observation noise. The second one, interobjective agreement, favors those objectives that agree with other objectives. And the final one, maximum knotted boundary, favors those objectives that contain their optimum within the user specified parameter range that we are performing the optimization within. And so our algorithm has the following steps. 
We define a set of behaviors, and in our work, we use the three behaviors I just introduced. We then condition the distribution over scalarization weights on the objective behaviors. So we end up with an, a distribution P of lambda given the calligraphic B, where the calligraphic B is the set of all behaviors across all of our heuristic objectives. We also define the objective weights lambda K for each of the K objectives to be binary, where um, value one indicates that that objective is useful and zero indicates otherwise. We define distributions over behaviors for useful and non-useful objectives, and these are designed to represent practitioners' expectations about what a useful objective should behave like in terms of our behaviors that we've defined. We then use these distributions to compute the posterior probability of an objective being useful given its behaviors. And finally, we use a linear scalarization function as lambda, where these above posterior probabilities end up acting as objective weights. So if a an objective has a high posterior probability of being useful, it will be upweighted in our optimization procedure. And if it has a low probability of being useful given its behaviors, it will be downweighted. And as I mentioned before, the set of behaviors and also their distributions for useful and not useful objectives are user specified quantities in our framework. So this is an overview of our method, which is called MANATI and stands for Multi-Objective Bayesian Optimization with Heuristic Objectives. And it basically follows the, the normal workflow of a Bayesian optimization um, approach. We start with our initial training set or initial acquisitions for the K heuristic objectives. We then fit a multi-objective Gaussian process to our data. In step three, we compute the desirable behaviors for each objective using the posterior fit to that objective. In step four, we use these um, distributions over the objective behaviors to uh, update the objective weights or the posterior probabilities of an objective being useful given its behaviors. And in step five, we optimize the scalarized acquisition function um, in the expectation under the distribution over the scalarization weights, which is conditioned on the, on the set of desirable behaviors. And so the maximum of this optimization procedure gives us the location where we should sample our objectives next. In our work, we showcase our method on two uh, hyperparameter optimization problems for real biomedical workflows. Specifically, we optimize a normalization cofactor for imaging mass cytometry data analysis, and we optimize the proportion of highly variable genes for single cell RNA sequencing data analysis. And we compare Manity to two simple baselines and three state-of-the-art existing methods. And these methods are um, ranging in terms of both their approach, um, for example, hypervolume-based approach, uncertainty-based approach, or approach based on random scalarizations, and also the setting for which these methods were designed to perform well, for example, specifically designed to work on noisy objectives or um, being efficient to scale to many objectives. In these benchmarking exercises, we had access to um, expert annotations that served as ground truth for our evaluations. And we use a range of different metrics to show that Manity either outperformed or performed comparably to these existing methods. So in summary, our method is designed for scenarios where many objectives are possible, but we do not know upfront which ones are going to be useful or informative for optimization. In our framework, a practitioner defines des desirable behaviors and what these would look like for useful objectives, and they define these only once at the beginning and do not participate during acquisition. And our method infers which objectives are useful based on behaviors learned from the posterior fit and guides optimization towards maxima of those objectives. And our specific contributions are um, the fact that we introduced the concept of behaviors computed from the posterior fit, suggested examples of those behaviors, inferred objective usefulness via the posterior probabilities of being useful for objective given its behaviors, and constructed objectives and applied our method to real biomedical workflows. Thank you for your attention and see you at our poster.